Are you having an upset stomach? Maybe you have burning pain, belching a lot, nausea. Maybe you're wondering, how do you know if you have Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori infection? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at this specific question. We're going to look at signs and symptoms that make us think, give us clinical suspicion that you do have H. pylori, what you can do about it, which tests to do, etc. So if you like this kind of information about health-related things, digestion, nutrition, etc., click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the video to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer. The information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or a medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of health and treatment success. If you need medical attention, don't delay in seeking that treatment. Okay, let's look at how do you know if you have Helicobacter pylori infection? So how do you know if you have H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori? Most people that get diagnosed with H. pylori first have specific symptoms or clinical signs that make their doctor suspicious enough to test them for this. And it's not something that everyone should rush out and get tested and treated for because we don't always know if H. pylori is a problem. There are clear cases when it is a problem. For instance, H. pylori can cause stomach ulceration and even uh, ulceration further down in the small intestine. So if you don't have symptoms, which we're gonna look at some of those symptoms now, may not make sense to get tested. But there are still some reasons to be tested in the absence of clinical symptoms, which we're gonna discuss as well. So studies looking for the most common Helicobacter pylori symptoms found nausea to be one of the most prevalent symptoms followed by gastric pain, which is basically uh, pain uh, just below your ribs in the middle uh, of your abdominal cavity. And also heart pain was a common one as well. So heart pain uh, is chest pain, you know, near the heart which is obviously referred from the stomach. So those with H. pylori, Helicobacter pylori, are at increased risk for ulcerations in their stomach and the upper part of their small intestine known as the duodenum. The most common ulceration type of symptom is abdominal pain. It can be like a dull aching pain in that, in that kind of middle below the rib of area, and it doesn't really go away most of the time, you know, completely. So it may show up for a few weeks and then go away for a few weeks, but it's kind of there in the background uh, coming and going at times, but still never fully goes away. Sometimes the pain may have a sequence too with based on where the ulceration is. So it may go away two or three hours after you eat, or it may come on right after eating. And that just depends on which part of the stomach and digestive tract is involved with the ulceration, which has to do with the acid content in the digestive tract at the time when there's more acid present, there's going to be more symptoms. So if it comes on right after eating, chances are if it is related to ulceration, it's going to be in the stomach. But still, that is a big if. You can't always go on symptoms for your diagnosis. So other symptoms that can come on with Helicobacter pylori include a feeling of fullness and also lots of bloating and belching or burping having an upset stomach or dyspepsia, sometimes known as, where things just don't feel settled. Sometimes there could be acid reflux going on as well. Over time, if that nausea and discomfort in your digestive tract leads to a loss of appetite, then there could be weight loss as well. So all these symptoms may give you a vague understanding that maybe you have H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori, but symptoms alone can't be enough to diagnose this. There are a lot of things that can mimic these symptoms, simply just not producing enough digestive enzymes or acid in your digestive tract can create some of these symptoms. For sure, something like bacterial overgrowth and even fungal overgrowth can also create that unsettled feeling, weird different pains in the abdomen, and definitely bloating, belching, et cetera. But another thing that may raise your suspicion level of having Helicobacter pylori is your geographical area where you were born or where you currently live. Helicobacter pylori infections or the presence of it is inversely associated with socioeconomic status. So if you grew up and currently live in a westernized country, then 
the chances are less. It doesn't mean you can't have it, it's just a little bit less. Whereas if you're from second world or third world country, it may be more likely that you have it. Also, if it's in your family, mothers, brothers, sisters, fathers, if they had it, then chances are you have it too. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you have it and it doesn't necessarily mean be treated just because they had it. But if you are having the symptoms, it would make more sense to be tested. And sometimes what happens is you know, one person gets tested, the other people are still carrying it, even though they don't have symptoms, and then they can give it back to that person and vice versa. It's easily passed along from one person to another. Um, it's usually through like sharing drinks and, you know, kissing and things like that, where it's going to be passed. So this is where testing comes in. It's really helpful in understanding what is and isn't going on there. You wouldn't want to go just based on symptoms alone. So the most common test that's done is the urea breath test, but some people can also get diagnosed through endoscopy. The breath test does is performed by consuming a tablet of urea and measuring the output put of carbon dioxide. So urease is present in the helicobacter pylori microbe or bacteria, and this is a depiction of it here. And what it's doing with that is it's kind of neutralizing the acidic environment. So it uses water and urea to make carbon dioxide and ammonia and sodium bicarb. And these can neutralize some of that acidic environment. It creates a nice environment for that helicobacter pylori to live in. And the byproduct of that is carbon dioxide. So when you ingest the urea tablet, you're going to have an increased output of carbon dioxide, and that can be measured. And an increased amount indicates H. pylori is present in the stomach. The endoscopy route involves getting a sample from the stomach lining and evaluating the presence of H. pylori. So these are some of the most common ways to know if you have helicobacter pylori, but there's also testing that can be done for antibodies through your blood. Also stool testing can also be done. These tests that I outlined here, the breath test and the endoscopy just happen to be a little bit more accurate in pinpointing that. So they're the most commonly used and the ones that we usually rely on. All right. So that's all I had to share with you on this topic. How do you know if you have helicobacter pylori or also known as H. pylori? If you do have questions about the testing on some of these symptoms regarding helicobacter pylori, drop it in the comment section. Or if you have other questions around this topic or symptoms, also drop it in the comment section. I'll definitely do my best to try and answer your question. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.